Ladies and gentlemen, friends and foes, children of all ages, step right up. This is a performance not to be missed. Take your seat and get out your popcorn because I can guarantee you a spectacle you have never seen before and will never see again. This is the moment that you've waited for, a place where dreams become reality, where the stage comes to life and the mundane becomes sensational. And for just this one night, exclusively for you cats and kittens, <laughs> the big top has transformed. We've given our lion tamers and our fire breathers the night off, and for one night and one night only, all three rings, every sideshow, Every light and every darkened corner will bring you tales from the Broadway stages far and near. Bringing in talent the world has waited for years to see. Actors, singers, dancers, and puppet masters here to tell you the stories you have been waiting for and you just didn't know it. Distinguished guests, you have just bought yourself a ticket to a night of unparalleled entertainment. So without further ado, curtain up, light the lights, let the magic of musicals take you away, sit back, relax and enjoy, and welcome to the greatest shows on earth.
Well, now that our fabulous performers have wet your whistle, I invite you to turn your eyes to the center ring for a glimpse into the musical life of Annie and her friends. A favorite of the stage, young Annie lives a miserable existence in a New York orphanage run by a horrible woman, Miss Hannigan. Neglected and belittled, the orphans trudge through each hopeless day, laboring in a sweatshop with none of the comforts of life. And when Annie runs off to the streets of the city for a little freedom and some time to search for her folks, her friends are forced to work even harder to make up for her, mis her misbehavior. If anyone deserves an e evening out at the Big Top, it's this next man. Meek flower shop assistant Seymour has lived a fairly uneventful life. Most days he tends his flowers and pines over his coworker, Audrey. Until one evening, during a total eclipse, he discovers an unusual plant that attracts a great deal of business for the previously struggling store. Meanwhile, Audrey is facing the end of yet another harmful relationship that has left her feeling broken. As she sits outside the flower shop, Seymour stops to give her comfort, and she sees him in a new light, realizing the kindness of the person who has been nearby all along. Wash off your mascara Here, take my Kleenex Wipe that lipstick away Show me your face Clean as the morning I know things are bad But now they're okay Suddenly see
Bad times are gone, washed away. Please understand that it's still strange and frightening. Both losers like I've been, it's so hard to say. Suddenly see more. The draw of the spotlight has always brought out the best and the worst in people. As we follow the life and times of silent movie star Charlie Chaplin, we meet Hedda Hopper, a gossip columnist who can ruin careers with the swipe of her pen. Hedda, who hated promiscuity, adultery, and communism, despised Charlie Chaplin the most. She particularly hates the success that he's gained in the United States and plans to expose his true character to all of the world. Mr. Chaplin, you may think I'm rather small Cause the posh papers are falling at your feet So go ahead and snub me And don't return my cause And build your house on top of easy but what you gonna do when it all goes down? Cause I let a little rumor spread. Ha! Ah, what you gonna do if I change the name? The person sleeping in your bed. What you gonna do when I tell the tale that makes the country turn its head? Just a little gossip and just a little lie. I'll simply say the little tramp was just a little spy. And what's he gonna do when it all falls down? Hey there, Mr. Chaplin. Well, your act deserves applause. You wave a flag and the country is in prayer. What you gonna do when it all goes 
falls down And where you gonna go from there What you gonna do when the money's gone And who you gotta buy to care What you gonna do when the country says Now get yourself out of here And what you gonna paint when you cannot paint the town I'm gonna wipe the smile from that famous little cloud And what's he gonna do when it all falls down And all the king's horses and all the king's men Will never put poor Charlie together again And what's he gonna do when it all Clearly, life in the public eye is not always easy. If you look to the circus ring on your right, you'll have a shot to see a musical about the life of American founding father, Alexander Hamilton. In the show connecting history and innovative theater, we see Hamilton's triumphs and downfalls in love, money, and the federal government. We also get to know Eliza, Hamilton's wife, who believes that their marriage has been faithful. When the letters between Hamilton and his secret lover are published for all to see, Eliza is forced to face that which breaks her art and eventually her marriage. Take a look. has 
no place in our bed. They don't get to know what I said. I'm burning the memories, burning the letters that might have redeemed you. You forfeit all rights to my heart. You forfeit the place in our bed. You'll sleep in your office instead with only the memories of when you The next musical gives us a twist on the story of a bright-eyed college grad named Princeton. When he arrives in the city with big dreams and a tiny bank account, he has to move into a shabby apartment all the way out on Avenue Q. Still, the neighbors seem nice and he meets many new friends. Together they struggle to find jobs, dates, and their purpose in life. Even with good friends, life is complex, and one evening, Princeton, Kate, and Nikki lament about how they wish they could go back to a simpler time in their lives. No, not when they were with the traveling circus, but college. I wish I could go back to college. Life was so simple back then. What would I give to go back and live in a dorm with a meal plan again? <sighs> I wish I could go back to college. In college, you know who you are. You sit in the quad and think, oh my god, I am totally gonna go far. How do I go back to college? I don't know who I am anymore. I want to go back to my room and find a message in dry erase pen on the door. Whoa, I wish I could just drop a class. Or get into a play. Or change my major. Or date my TA. I, I need an academic advisor to point the way. We could be sitting in the computer lab, 4 a.m. before the final paper is due. Cursing the world cause I didn't start sooner And seeing the rest of the class there too I wish I could go back to college How do I go back to college? Ah, I wish I had taken more pictures But if I were to go back to college Think what a loser I'd be. I'd walk through the quad and think, oh my god, these kids are so much younger than me. Now you have a chance to see a show that is lesser known to the masses. The show Heathers takes you to the 1980s, where Veronica and the new kid JD, fancying themselves as the Bonnie and Clyde of the flashiest decade, start taking down the school bullies to make high school a better place. But every murderous love story has to begin somewhere. Here you will see Veronica the first time she sets her eyes on the new kid fighting the jerk jock. Needless to say, she is impressed, and their fates as a duo are sealed. Boys 
fight does it look so horrible yet feel so right i shouldn't watch this crap that's not who i am but with this kid damn hey mr no name kid so who might you be and could you fight for could you face the crowd? Could you be seen with me and still act proud? Hey, could you hold my hand? And could you carry me through no man's land? It's fine if you don't agree, but I would. Underground, I don't care how far you can set my broken bones, and I know CPR. Well, whoa, you can punch real good. You've lasted longer than I thought you would. So, hey, Mr. No Name Kid, if some night you're free, wanna fight for me? If you're still. Well, we all know the Big Top can draw a crowd, but over the years, Rogers and Hammerstein have been known to reel them in as well. The King and I, Cinderella, and The Sound of Music each left their mark on the golden age of musical theater. But it all began in 1943 in Oklahoma, where the wind comes sweeping down the plain, and where Lori Williams courts two rival men in her town. But as Lori tries to maneuver her own drama, her friend Ado Annie confesses that she is not only in love with her boyfriend, Will Parker, but also Ali Hakim, the Persian peddler, who she spent time with while Will was away in Kansas City. While juggling two men has its challenges, Ado Annie can't help but enjoy it. What's right and wrong since I've been tan? I heard a lot of stories and I reckon they are true about how girls are put upon by men. Oh no, I mustn't fall into the pit. But when I'm with a feller, I forget! A girl who can't say no I'm in a terrible fix I always say come on let's go just when I ought to say next when a person tries to kiss a girl I know she ought to give his face a smack but as soon as someone kisses me I'll swim, I swear I want to kiss him back I'm just a fool when that's a I can't be prissy and quaint I ain't the time to get faint I'll get a be when I ain't I can't say no What you gonna 
do when a feller gets flirty and starts to talk purdy? What you gonna do? Suppose that he says that your lips are like cherries or roses or berries. What you gonna do? Suppose that he says that you're sweeter than cream and he's gonna have cream or die. What you gonna do? And he talks that way. Spin is up. I'm just a girl who can't say no, can't seem to say it at all. I hate to disappoint a bow when he is paying a call. For a while I act refined and cool. I say not a love to city. Then I think of a little golden rule. For him, what he would do for me. Though we could resist a Romeo in a sombrero and chaps. Soon as I say no, man laughs. Something inside of me snaps. I can't say no. A girl who can't say no Kissing's my favorite food With or without the mistletoe I'm in a holiday mood Other girls are coy and hard to catch Well, other girls ain't having any fun Every time I lose a rose and match I have a funny feeling that I won Though I can feel Undertow. I never make a complaint till it's too late for restraints. Then when I want to, I can't, I can't say no. During the Great Depression, when most people were happy just to be surviving, a man named Clyde wanted more. After robbing his first bank, Clyde realizes he wants the notoriety as much as he wants the money. Not long before his first arrest, Clyde meets Bonnie and falls in love. Bonnie believes he is good at heart and breaks him out of jail thinking they will start a new life together. But Clyde has other plans and soon sweeps Bonnie up in his more dangerous vision of the future. Though Bonnie is reluctant at first, she begins to feel the excitement of living life as famous bank robbers. Well, who would have thought that a waitress from Moena would have had the balls to bust me out with my old 45. And who would have thought that a farm boy from Toledo would outsmart the smartest lawman and walk out of here alive? My name is gonna make the history books Too bad I won't be here I may have started out with small time crooks In a year or two I'll be as known As Chicago's Al Capone Thanks to you, Bonnie Babe, I can make plans again. I've got lots of reasons to keep living. It's true that love can set you free. Yes, this world will remember me. You said you go straight, Clyde. I want to be in movies. I can't name 
one movie star who's doing robberies on the side. I know in my heart, babe, that Hollywood is calling. How can I be in the spotlight if we always have to hide? We'll need some dough to get to Hollywood. One or two jobs should do. But after that, we will be done for good. Babe, when Hollywood gets hold of you, they'll be saying, Clara, who? No need to rush, everybody gets our autograph. Hello, oh. right, will be the words on our epitaph. Two living legends, that's what we will be. And that's okay with me. Every place that we go, folks will turn their heads. They'll be hollering from Dodge to Denver. We are the pair that they'll discuss. Yes, this world will remember us. We are make it dang sure that we leave our mark. You don't leave your mark by dig and ditches. No wonder we're who they'll discuss. Yes, this world will remember us. This dag world will remember us. This cold world will remember us. No way they won't remember us. See, in just a moment, the scenes from the stage can transport you. And our next one takes us to Washington Heights, a borough of New York, and a cast of characters with big dreams. The story follows Usnavi, who dreams of opening a bar in his home country, the Dominican Republic. Nina, who has returned home after a year at Stanford University, wondering if the sacrifices her father has made to pay for it are worth it and Abuela Claudia, who is the glue that holds the community together. As they navigate life and love, they discover that the winner of a $96,000 numbers game was sold from their own corner bodega, and they imagine how a win like that would change their lives forever. Lights up on Washington Heights up. Out of the break of day, I wake up and I got this little punk I gotta chase away. Pop the gray at the crack of dawn, sing while I wipe down the awning. Hey y'all, good morning. I am Usnavi and you probably never heard my name. Reports of my fame are greatly exaggerated, exacerbated by the fact that my syntax is highly complicated. Cause I am a grid from the single greatest little place in the Caribbean, Dominican Republic. I love it. Geez, I'm jealous of it. The heights, I flip the lights and start my I'm a street light choking on the heat. The world spins around while I'm frozen to my seat. The people that I know, I'll keep rolling down the street. But every day is different, so I'm switching up the beat. Cause my parents came from nothing. They got a little more, and sure, we're poor. But yo, at least we got the store. And it's all about the legacy they left for me. It's destiny. And one day I'll be on the beach with Sony writing checks to me. We came to work and to live. We got in line, common. PR, PR, no, stop it. I told her day we go from poverty to stock options. And today's all we got, so we cannot stop. This is our block. The little, 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 My family. Yeah. 
But as for mañana, mi pana, you gotta just keep watching. You'll see the late nights, you'll taste beans and rice, the serves and shaved ice. I ain't gonna say it twice, so turn up the stage lights. We're taking a flight to a couple of days in the life of what it's like in Washington Heights.
we sing so loud and rugged They can hear us across the bridge East of Cuckies Still on there, hey I'm still on there, yeah, hey Vanessa, forget about what could have been And dance with me one last time in the hood again Wampa! In the cast of characters that could have their own center ring show at the circus, Mary Poppins is near the top. With her flying umbrella, her charm with children, and her ability to make the unreal become real, I can only imagine the crowd she would draw. After stepping away from show business for nearly 60 years, the east wind blew her back onto our doorsteps. As she helps the Banks family once again, she takes the children on a trip into a priceless bowl that had been beloved by their mother. As they travel across the bowl's design, they come up to the Royal Dalton Music Hall, where a show is just beginning. Unable to resist a chance to show off her skills, she joins in the storytelling on stage. Uncle Gutenberg was a bookworm, and he lived on Charing Cross. The memory of his volumes brings a smile. He would read me lots of stories. When he wasn't on the sauce. Now I'd like to share the wisdom of my favorite bibliophile. He said, uh, color is not the book, so open it up and take a look. Cause under the covers one discovers that the king may be a crook.
Well, folks, that book is closed. The center ring is empty and your seed is about to be as well. It's not magic, it's intermission. And while the smell of elephant ears, hmm, caramel corn, they might tickle your fancy, but don't forget to enjoy the slice of cheesecake that awaits you. So by all means, stand. Risk the crowds. Empty your bladders, please. Enjoy the chatter and weave your way through the wares on display outside. And remember, the silent auction ends at the end of intermission, so get your bids in. But friends, whatever you do, don't let the sights and sounds of the sideshows stop you from sidling back to this very space and seating yourself once again as we resume the greatest shows on earth. Step right up, folks. Step right up. Take your seats before your seat takes off. Let the weight of your weary day drift off as your evening's entertainment enters the expanse once again. Have I got a show for you, folks? Have I got a show for you? And this time I have something really royal. In the peaceful and prosperous kingdom of Arcadia, the prevailing people are doing their best to prevent an oracle's pending prophecy of doom. Through scandal and self-discovery, the citizens strive to save the single governing guru of the land, the bewitching Beat. Believe it or not, the Beat itself holds the key to the prosperity of the province, and it must be protected. Performers, proceed.
Like the twists and flips of an acrobat, the next show may get you turned around wondering which way is up. Known for telling the story in a non-sequential way, we follow the love story of Jamie and Kathy. From the day they meet, through the triumphs and tribulations of marriage, until finally, Jamie leaves and chooses a future without Kathy. In the moment you will see here, Jamie has a new incredible book deal, and Kathy is struggling to find work as an actress, and the two seem a step out of sync. Although they have felt disconnected as their jobs have kept them in a long-distance relationship, Kathy seems hopeful when Jamie pops in for a surprise visit, but reconnecting is even harder than she expected. that you're here I stole a sweater from the costume shop It makes me look like Daisy May See, we're laughing I think we're gonna be okay so soon I thought we had a little time look whatever if you have to be together here, together sharing our night, spending our time, and you are going to choose someone else to be with. No, you are. Yes, Jamie, that's exactly what you're doing. You could be here with me or be there with them. 
As usual, guess what you pick? No, Jamie, you do not have to go to another party with the same 20 jerks you already know. You could be with your wife on her freaking birthday and you could, God forbid, even see my show. And I know in your soul it must drive you crazy that you won't get to play with their little girlfriends. No, I'm not, no, I'm not. And the point is, Jamie, that you can't spend a single day that's not about you and you and nothing but you. Novelist, novelist, you, isn't he wonderful just when he ain't the savior of writing? You, and you, and nothing but you, miles and piles of you, pushing through windows and bursting through walls on her to the sky. And I... I'll never understand how you can stand there straight and tall and see I'm crying and not do anything at all. Charity Hope Valentine always tries to look on the bright side of life. She works in a rundown dance hall and contends with a seemingly endless run of bad dates. Despite her frustrations, Charity is determined to envision a different life ahead. Her optimism rubs off on her dance hall co-workers as they share their dreams of getting out of their crummy job environment and into the bright world ahead. Not me. What? I said, not me. I am not going to spend the next 40 years in the Fandango Ballroom, and I am not going to become the world's first little gray-haired taxi dancer. I'm getting out. Out. What a beautiful word. <laughs> There's got to be something better than this. There's got to be something better to do. And when I find me something better to do, I'm going to get up, going to get out, going to get up, get out and do it. There's got to be some respectable trade. There's got to be something easy to learn. And when I find me something a half-wit can learn, I'm going to get up, going to get out, Gonna get up, get out, and learn it. All these jokers, how I hate them. With their grouping, crapping, clutching, clinching, strangling, handling, fumbling, pinching. Phooey! There's gotta be some life cleaner than this. There's gotta be some good reason to live. And when I find me some kind of life I can live, I'm gonna get up. I'm gonna get out, I'm gonna get up, get out, and live it. I've got it, I have got it. I'm gonna be a receptionist. Oh. And one of those glass office buildings like Lever Brothers. No, Seagram's. Oh, nine to five. I'll have my own typewriter, Underwood. Water coolers, office parties, coffee breaks. When I sit at my desk on the 41st floor In my cubby of a cubby of a cubby of Dior I'll receive big tycoons and I'll point to a chair I'll say, honey, while you're waiting How would you like to put it down over there? <laughs> There's gotta be something better than this there's got to be something better to do. And when I find me something better to do, I'm 
gonna get up, I'm gonna get out, I'm gonna get up, get out and do it. Me too. Me too. I'm gonna get out of here and I'm gonna go right to the top. I'm gonna be a hat check girl <laughs> at Sardi's East. And I'm gonna wear one of those fine little black numbers. You know, the ones cut up to here and down to there. Oh, and all of those hats coming in. Derbies, Humberts, and that checkered number with the skin from the feather. Check your hat, sir. Check your coat, sir. Check your shoes, sir. Check your pants. Check your socks, sir. Check your shoes, sir. I can hold them while you dance. Check your eyes, sir. Check your ears, sir. Check and see if you are free. How's about it after hours? I'll check you. And you'll check me. What can you do? I don't know. Just get me out of here and I'll figure it out later. There's got to be some life cleaner than this. There's got to be some good reason to live. And when I find me some kind of life I can live. I'm going to get up, I'm going to get out, I'm going to get up, get out, live it. Now, Katie Heron is the new girl at North Shore High School in Chicago, and she is desperate to fit in. Janice and Damien befriend the new girl, and when the plastics set their sights on Katie, Janice convinces Katie to pretend to be their friend in order to dig for dirt down the reigning queen, Regina George. When the dethroned Regina finds out about the plot, she decides to get revenge by releasing the burn book, full of scathing commentary on nearly everyone at school. If she can't rule the world, then she will burn the whole thing to the ground.
My name is Regina George And I am a massive deal I will grind you to sand Beneath my Louboutin's hill This is what I get for helping Helping someone they fit in Katie Heron, enjoy your temporary win My name is Regina George Regina is a fugly cow the gasoline. I want to watch the world burn and everyone get green. I want to watch the world burn. I brought the gasoline. I want to watch your world burn and everyone get green. Katie, time to watch your back, Katie time to turn and cough, because you took me down, but you didn't finish me off. My name is Regina George, and in case you're keeping score, Katie may have won the battle, but I will win the war for, I want to watch the world burn. I brought the gasoline. I want to make the world burn. Regina is a fugly cow. Regina is a fugly cow. And you can quote this. Whoa, 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 whoa. If it seems that Regina has resumed her reign over the realm, enjoying the smoldering embers at her feet as she watches her classmates burdened with the blaze of the burn book, then you might be right. But you can't say that she didn't warn you. Not too long ago, these same students were reveling in their momentary freedom from Regina's rule. All they really want is to walk down the hall, fearless and untethered by the tyranny of others' judgment. Wait! Who is my boss? Now Regina is gone. I'll wear what I want, which is what I have on, and a vest. That's how it feels to be free, free. I thought you would cave, but you stood up to her. You were strong, you were brave. No, you know what you were. You were fetch, so fetch, and we're free. Whoa, fearless. Got no time for drama, so go cry to mama. 
girl's gotta do. I did it for me, sure, but really for you. So now you can live fearlessly too. Imagine fearless, wow. Imagine stronger, better, bolder, and fearless, wow. Brush that dirt off your shoulder. Not hunching your shoulders to make yourself small. To walk right down the middle of a hall. Not small. Not small. Not small. <laughs> Mac and Mabel is the story of the tumultuous romantic relationship between Hollywood director Mac Sennett and his partner Mabel Norman, who became one of his biggest stars. In a series of flashbacks, Sennett thinks back to the glory days of Keystone Studios from 1911 when he discovered Norman to her tragic death from tuberculosis in 1930. In this particular scene, Mabel is frustrated with her treatment and is acting out her rage towards Mac in a musical fit, imagining life out of his reach. Mac, why did you do that? Do what? Get rid of a phony? You ought to thank me. He's not a phony, Mac. He's a very successful director, and he wants to star me in a feature film. Then he's dumber than I thought. The public's not paying good money to see Mabel Norman in more than two reels and without a pie in her face. Mr. Taylor thinks you're wrong, Mac. What does that bum know? The old oil, yeah. That he can lay on. I know a charming little restaurant on Silver Lake, Miss Norman, and you were lapping it up. Yes, I liked it. It was nice being talked to for a change instead of bellowed at. When did I ever bellow? When you breathe. When you tell me how to walk, what to wear, where to go. And when you talk in your sleep. Damn it, I won't have you listening to me when I sleep. Then sleep alone. Why do you think you're going? I got cars coming in 10 minutes to take us down to the beach for the chase. This is a working day, you know. I'll take a taxi. Are you nuts? The cars are paid for. I'll take a taxi. Take a damn streetcar if you want. But we start shooting at two, with or without you. Is that clear? Yes, Mr. Sinetti, that's perfectly clear. This ninny of a puppet was available the second that he called. And all he had to do was yell, Hey, Mabel, and this dumb hatchling a crowed. For seven lousy years, I watched him swear and shove and shout. With you or without you, it's gonna be without. I 
gotta give my life some sparkle and fizz And think a thought that isn't wrapped up in his The place that I consider paradise is Wherever he ain't, wherever he ain't No more to wither when he's grouchy and gruff No more to listen to him mellow and bluff Tomorrow morning I'll be strutting my stuff Wherever he ain't, wherever he ain't Enough of being bullied and bossed Ta-ta, I'll be the same and get lost I walk behind him like a meek little lamb And have my fill of his not giving a damn I'll go to Sydney, I'll say on as I am Wherever he ain't, wherever he ain't It's time for little Mel to rebel was a terrible trap with me behaving like a simpering sap and so I'm looking for a spot on the map if he's going south I'm going north if he's going black I'm going far wherever he I love you, you're perfect, now change, is a witty musical review that tackles modern love in all its forms, from the perils and pitfalls of the first date to marriage, children, and the twilight years of life. Set in the modern world and told in a series of vignettes and songs, the show traces the arc of relationships throughout the course of a life. In this moment, Three characters are stuck, as they always seem to be, waiting, waiting, waiting. Honey? Honey? What? How much time before halftime? 32 seconds. 32 real life seconds or 32 football seconds? 32 football seconds. Oh, I see. <laughs> We're in one of those timeout, slow motion, instant replay situations. Yes, I do understand. After all, I worked very hard to understand football because I know you like it. And I do find it interesting. <sighs> it's interesting how they, you know, <laughs> run up and down the field chasing each other. Truly fascinating. So, how much time is left? 32 seconds. Still 32 seconds? <laughs> Honey, you ever realize that my whole weekend is spent waiting for you? You ever notice that? <laughs> waiting, waiting, waiting. Waiting, waiting, waiting. We came to buy shoes Like she needs more shoes But so far we haven't been through The shoe department I was dragged here I was nagged here Now she's left me Holding the bag here Mailed up here in Macy's, haven't seen the wife since noon. 
jailed up here in Macy's. I hope I'm paroled real soon. Twitching here in Macy's. Lord, can I escape somehow? I'm bitching here in Macy's. Won't someone just shoot me now? Honey, honey, I know you can hear me. Honey, how much longer are you gonna be? Oh, waiting. Oh, come on, girls, I haven't got all day. My bladder's bursting and I'm stuck here in line again. This line is endless and I drink too much wine again. How come men never have to put up with all this? The situation could not be much clearer now. I need a toilet and I need a mirror now. I shall refuse to let injustice exist. I'm a woman, I gotta be and I'm pissed. Marriage comes cheap. The situation is I'm gonna explode right now. My bladder's bursting and I'm gonna explode right now. The situation is I'm gonna explode. This waiting's appalling and nature is calling. How long must this stalling persist? I'm a head case waiting for him. Waiting for her. I gotta be. The delinquent drapes gang and the squeaky clean squares can't see eye to eye on anything. But when drapes leader Crybaby and square member Allison meet at the anti-polio picnic and discover that they are both orphans, their star-crossed love story begins to blossom. But Allison isn't the only one who is in love. During a jukebox jamboree at Turkey Point, we see Lenora a girl who is obsessed with Cryberry, Crybaby on a highly neurotic level. Lenora jumps at the chance at the open mic, singing of her devotion and love to Crybaby, as well as her general state of mental health. Hi, hello. Um, this song is dedicated to, well, you know who you are. <laughs> That's what they say I've got Or maybe they say I'm not Playing with a full deck But hey, what the heck can I do? Baby, I've got a screw loose for you Bonkers That's what they're calling me not metaphorically, they mean truly insane, but they can't hear the voice in my brain, giving orders to keep loving you. Eccentric, erratic, toys in the In tatting your name on my arm. New, 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 new,
lost. I've made up my mind, which I have lost. Screw this! Clinically certified! A panel of doctors tried to lock me away. But until that day, when they finally do... Yeah, I know. Leave me alone. I'll be here if you need a loose screw. Set in New York City, the next musical follows four characters exploring how their ordinary lives connect in the most extraordinary ways. On one evening, Claire and Jason are simply trying to get to her cousin's place for an evening of fine food and friends. Of course, simple excursions can bring out the worst and the best in all of us. With the wine, the wine, the wine. We were shopping for a bottle to bring to her cousin's soiree. My cousin, the sous chef, she's very gourmet. I grabbed my favorite Cabernet. He's got no clue, and so I say, darling, the wine. The wine? The wine. They're serving monkfish, so darling, the wine can't be red. How about this Austrian Riesling instead? Honey, you know I don't like the Riesling. When have you ever seen me drink Riesling? Never, but can't you listen this once? Red wine and fish, you'll look like a dunce. Fine, I'll bring the red, you'll bring the white. That way, I'll still get drunk, you'll still be right. Fine, fine. fine. There was the cab. The cab. The cab was stuck in traffic in the middle of Broadway. Ten minutes we wait. We're 12 blocks away and we're already late. I point out there'd be no delay if we would just turn that away. Honey, the cab. The cab. The cab was pointing squarely down Broadway. I know you're concerned, but your cousin's on Broadway, so why have we turned? Darling, I know my cousin's on Broadway, but there was lots of traffic on Broadway. Surely, but now, in my own defense, we're farther away, which doesn't make sense. Fine, driver, please stop here if you would. I think walking will do us both some good. Fine. Fine, fine, fine. We don't say anything as we're walking down Broadway. It's like I'm walking next to a stranger. I've had that feeling more and more, like I don't even know him. Right now it's cold and we're still in a hurry. I'm not going to stop and I'm not going to worry. We'll, we'll be, be fine, fine, fine. And then it starts to rain. My hair starts to drip, my shoes are a mess, my bag's getting wet, and so is my dress. I love the rain, how everything the shivers. The wind's picking up, we've got no umbrella. It dawns your hair like the morning dew. And suddenly I start to think of the day that I first met her. A bucket of snow had landed in her hair. I pictured her shaking, snowflakes off her shoulders and somehow I want to get us back to there I wanted to know that I could better spend a single day without her but how could she know how can she know Shit, ow, my shoe, my shoe, my shoe! Damn it, this is really fantastic. No, really absurd. And what, you just stand there and don't say a word. Fine, I'm gonna go, we're late for my cousin. God help the soul who's late for my cousin. You can stay put here out in the rain, but don't leave it up to me to explain. Give me the wine.
fine, don't take all day, fine then. Bring it yourself, your Cabernet, Jesus. Shut up, Claire, and marry me. Fine. What? Folks, we know that the best shows bring us back again and again, and so we return to New York City, where everything has changed for Annie. Weeks ago, she was selected to spend a short time at the residence of the exceptionally wealthy Oliver Warbucks. While it was meant to be temporary, she charmed the hearts of the staff, and Warbucks decided to help Annie find her long-lost parents by offering reward money. However, evil Miss Hannigan, her evil brother Rooster, and Lily St. Regis have different plans. In an attempt to get the $50,000 reward for themselves, they have the idea to impersonate Annie's parents. As they plot together, they imagine how easy life will be once they pull off their scam. I remember the way our sainted mother would sit and croon us her lullaby. She'd say, kids, there's a place that's like no other. You've got to get there before you die. You don't get there by playing from the rule book. You stack the aces. You load the dice. Mother dear, oh, we know you're down there listening. How can we follow your sweet advice? To Easy Street, Easy Street. How we scrounge for three or four bucks while she gets war bucks. The little brat! It ain't fair how this life is driving me nuts while we get peanuts. She's living fat. Maybe she holds the key, that little lady. To get more bucks instead of less. <laughs> Do we fix the game with something shady? Where does that put us? Give you one guess. Yes! yes. Easy Street!
Uh, I'm excited to uh, welcome you guys back to the Broadway show. Thank you guys so much for being here tonight. Um, I just have a couple of thank yous, and then I'm just going to quickly read through the people that um, won on the auction real quick. Um, I want to thank our booster club, first of all. Our booster club officers and parents that have been helping out with the booster activities have gotten us back to a place where we're actually doing Broadway show. We did Madrigal Feast. We've toured um, to Idaho. Yay. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's something, okay? It's better than Gorst, which, you know, it's just it's, it's a step up. So um, we got to tour a little bit. We've gone, we went to CBC and, and um, we went to state. We've just done a lot of the kind of normal things. Our booster club's been right there with us the whole way helping us out. So let's give them a big round of applause. Our admin team, both at the high school level and also at the district level, are so supportive of the arts. And I just want to make sure that we recognize as a community, an arts community, not only you know, us as teachers, but also as the students and parents, that our, our administrators are super supportive of the arts. And that's not the, that's not the case in every district. Um, our principal, Mr. Goodwin, is, is awesome. And our assistant principals, um, our superintendent, just a great set of administrators and uh, just really appreciate them. So let's give them a round of applause. Tonight we've had a couple of um, technical, a uh, bunch of technical people helping out. Um, our sound guy is Brennan Kuntz. He's right back here on the soundboard. Let's give him a round of applause. Backstage and running lights and checking you guys in on your tickets. Miss Lloyd, Sarah Lloyd is our uh, theater manager and she has a crew of students that are here helping us tonight. So let's give them a round of applause. Um, we have, we have uh, a crew of people that put this show on and make this happen um, from a, a teacher standpoint. Obviously I'm involved. Um, I have an assistant director that's been helping me with this show since its inception. And I think that was in 2011 or so that we started the show. And she is with us through the whole thing with uh, auditions and helping kids with their acts and things. And that's Katie Olson. She's also a music teacher at EPO. <laughs> One kind of sad note, um, Don Dilly is our district accompanist and he's retiring this year and moving to places unknown, otherwise known as Seattle. So. <laughs> I hear, I hear stories that he's going to be busking in the Pike Street Market area. So if you're down there and you see a guy that looks a little tattered and worn, it's probably Don. So uh, he has a pump organ, I guess, that, you know, you sit with the feet and pump the organ. No, I'm, I'm being serious about this. So if you see him, I, I'm serious. I'm really being serious. So if you see a guy, like, pumping an organ and it looks like Don, it is, okay? So throw some money in his hat and help him out. Um, but we're going to definitely miss him as we uh, go forward in this uh, endeavor. Um, the guy that's been behind the microphone over here doing your narration the entire night has been our narrator, I think three or four times, four times, and uh, four times it is. And he doesn't even have kids in the program anymore. He has two kids that are in band, which we think is okay too. Um, <laughs> but, but he doesn't even have kids here and he's still here helping us out. And I so appreciate him. He's, he's got a great sense of humor. He's just a good guy. And um, just enjoy having him as a part of the program. So let's give Scott, wait, I've got to, wait, wait. I have to say it because he wants ammunition to get me later. So if I don't say that he's just one of the circus clowns, it would be a miss. So Scott, one of our circus clowns, Spangler. Uh, now this, this program, when we started this, it was small. There were a couple of solos and a uh, class numbers, and that was pretty much the extent of it. And um, this has morphed into what you see here tonight and, and bigger as we go forward. Most of the kids that are in the program tonight have never even seen the Broadway show before, so they had to learn the process, know what was going on, and, and try to figure it out as they went. All of the acts that are here tonight, other than the class numbers, were auditioned for. They came in and put the numbers together themselves, selected them themselves, choreographed, costumed, the whole, everything, all the pieces of it were put together by students that auditioned for those spots. Um, and then the class numbers were also choreographed by students. So In the Heights was choreographed by some students in, in concert choir and just right down the line. This is a student run program and it is such a privilege as a director to be able to step back and say, you guys take the reins, let's make this thing happen and let them be the teachers. 
um, and they've just done a great job. I think you'd agree that the, the numbers that are here tonight have just been off the charts good, and uh, those kids that have choreographed, I just think the world of them and the work that they've done to prepare and get in front of their kids in a scary situation sometimes and lead those kids forward to what you saw here tonight. So let's give our student choreographers a hand. All right, I'm gonna do this kind of quickly. I'm not gonna say, well, I guess I will say what it is. I, I may read your name wrong and I am so sorry, but I, I, I'm gonna do my best. Okay, uh, the barbecue basket from Colonial Life, Amanda um, something Clark. It's hyphenated, I can't read the first part. Uh, the graduation basket, Aaron Hoskins, thinking ahead, Aaron Hoskins, graduation basket. The Mary Kay pampering basket from Stephanie Springer, um, T. Brush. Voice lessons, well, so we should find out who this is that thinks their kid needs voice lessons. <laughs> um, let's see, Becky, I won't read your last name, I don't know, I can't, it starts with an M, Becky M, there you go. Uh, haircut and t-shirt donated by Lenny's Classic Barbershop, Kathy Hansen. Movie basket donated by the Booster Club, uh, Corey, it looks like it's, is it Liss, Corey Liss? The book basket donated by a Booster Club parent, Thomas Dean. That was a good one. Uh, oh, I won one. I bought a virtual assistant to help me with my office. <laughs> uh, initially, I was gonna buy it for my wife, you know, to help her with her office, but then I was like, no, I need way more help than she does. So that's for me, there you go. Um, the three-piece artwork set, which is donated by the PTSA. The first one, Jay Hubs. And then another one, Carmen Gaskill. And then another one, Carmen Gaskill. You got some artwork. And another one, Carmen Gaskill. You're set up. Um, the two-piece artwork set is J. Hubs. And these will all be out there so you can find them. And another three-piece artwork set, um, Amanda with the hyphenated Morley Clark. I think I read this one correctly. Morley Clark. Uh, three mermaid tail blankets. Don't know what that is, but Amanda, you won that as well. Um, family photo session, Becky um, M, Becky M. The acupuncture gift certificate, A. Hubs. Haircut and hoodie, uh, last name Bur Burgess. Winter adventure basket, uh, uh, J uh, Jason, Don Donye, Jason, I'm not sure, <laughs> something. Uh, Mary Kay basket donated by Donna Semolini, uh, Tara Reynolds. I'm almost done. The honey basket, Todd Grogan. Fly fishing, Steve Hope. Nice. Uh, the baking basket, Heather um, Archut. Arcut, I said it wrong, sorry. Cake, Donna Holland. Uh, roof, clean, roof cleaning or exterior, car or exterior soft wash, which was donated by AK Construction, Kathy Kleber. The chocolates basket, Mrs. I'm going to say this Ovchinikova, correctly, kind of. <laughs> the pizza basket, um, Miss uh, R. Glans. Summer sweets basket, uh, Garrett, Cody, and we're back to the beginning. There you go. Let's give those people a round of applause. You're all winners. Again, I just want to thank you guys so much for being here and supporting us through the process, and we're getting back on our feet, and it is a fun process to, to do. Um, we have one more song for you, plus our finale, and uh, then we'll bid you guys good night. Some say that all the world's a stage and we are merely the players in it, but if everyone is an actor, how can we really tell the truth from the lies? the good from the evil, the facade from the authentic. In the story of Jekyll and Hyde, the rich and poor of 19th century London are observing how people act, how they want others to see them, no matter who they really are inside. It is questions like these that lead the talented physician, Dr. Jekyll, to try to cure his ailing father's mental illness by separating good from evil in the human personality. His passion inadvertently creates an alternate personality of pure evil, dubbed Mr. Hyde, who wreaks a murderous havoc on the city of London. When the battles are waged beneath the surface, 
Who do we believe? face that we wear in the cold light of day. It's, it's society's, society's mask, mask, it's society's way, and the truth is that it's all a facade. There's a face that we hide till the nighttime appears, and what's hiding inside behind all of our fears is our true self locked inside the Distinguished guests of the grandstand, like the fleeting nature of a dream in an early morning slumber, the last wisps of cotton candy on your tongue, and the final twirl of a baton, all good things must come to an end. Alas, even while our final reveries resonated through the rafters, the caravan was being packed. The tightrope and trapeze have been tucked away, the ring of fire has been snuffed out, the knives have been sheathed, and every single clown and Mike Allen is back in the Volkswagen. <laughs> it's time to lower the lights and let them lapse into their leisure to awaken afresh on a new day. But fear not, we have one final cannon to fire. 
Before we usher you out of the warmth and welcome of the tent and into the ease of the evening, our dazzling talent wishes to bid you farewell with a final flourish. We hope we've ignited your imagination, whisked you away to another world, and given you a glimpse at greatness. And while the sights you have seen were singular to these seconds, there will always be another tale to tell, another song to sing, another lion to tame. Until that time, thank you, and so long from the greatest shows on earth. This world will remember us. 